Today, we're gonna take this old Mac Mini, modify it with a bunch of weird electronic pranks, gags, and goofy nonsense, and then we're gonna send it back to my friend Dan, all the way up in Canada. I have a soldering iron, a fancy 3D printer, and a big box of gizmos. So stay tuned. And if you enjoy rescuing and repurposing e-waste, only to do unconscionable things to it, I hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel. My good friend Dan, aka the Canadian Computer Collector, recently sent me his old Intel Mac Mini to use as the opening salvo in what I'm gonna call the first annual International Cursed Computing Challenge. So I originally thought I'd just dremel right into the top of this thing, but then I decided that I'd like all of my weird mods to at least be reversible, in case Dan ever wants to repurpose this thing as an actual Mac Mini once again. Luckily, today's sponsor, Bamboo Labs, has sent me their new Bamboo P2S 3D printer. So we're gonna 3D print a new, even more cursed case for this poor Mac Mini and then mounts all of our weird stuff without remorse. Well, I guess we should make sure this thing actually even works. PlayStation keyboard, crimp it mouse. Ooh, there's a treasure. BOSU four in one workout. Well, the good news is it works. The bad news is I don't know what the password is. Either Dan never told me or he did tell me and I completely forgot, which is probably more likely, but that's okay because we're not gonna keep Mac OS on here. Oh no. Okay, let me give you a sneak peek at some of the pranks we're going to install in this computer. First of all, and I'm very excited for this, I have a timer and we are going to hook this up to the power supply so that Dan has to turn the timer on to turn the computer on. And if the time runs out, it'll just shut off. This fun little device is like a mouse jiggler taken to the extreme. It will do very obvious keystrokes and mouse movements at random intervals. And this will of course be hidden inside the computer. So, well, it just looks possessed. And we have this, <laughs> a goat noise maker, which will make random goat screams as the computer is on. Okay, so let me show you the case we're gonna be printing because it is freaking awesome. It's actually on Maker World, so we can go to online models here in Bamboo Studio and we can just find it. There it is. <laughs> Look at this thing. It is a retro mini ATX case. And that looks plenty big enough to fit the guts of the Mac Mini into. So I'm gonna download. Bamboo Studio brings all of these plates in automatically. And I can also make some changes here. Since we have multiple colors, we'll paint this blue. Dan's cool PC. I think we're gonna make this purple. Oh yeah, look at that. It's perfect. Cue the epic time lapse. While this thing is printing, let me tell you about some of the awesome features of this new Bamboo P2S. There's a quick swap nozzle with an easy to service one clip mechanism, making maintenance almost effortless. This time lapse I've been showing is right from the P2S's built in high frame rate camera. The enhanced LED lighting and high quality live view make monitoring prints easy with smooth live view video in Bamboo Studio and Bamboo Handy. The P2S has this glorious five inch touchscreen with really good looking graphics and a nice intuitive user interface. You can actually do a lot on the screen, like start prints, view instructions, step-by-step -step guides. We're also using the new AMS2 Pro, which in my opinion is an absolute killer feature of bamboo printers. Not only does it hold multiple filaments for multicolor prints, but it has a smart drying function and humidity monitoring, which is really important for print quality. Oh man, just look at these parts. Absolutely no print flaws, and I didn't have to do any manual calibration on the printer at all. The P2S is basically plug and play. And from your first print, you'll get quality results like this. So check out the links I've put down in the description below. And once again, thank you Bamboo for sponsoring today's video. So we just have to use my soldering iron to melt in some threaded inserts so we can put this thing together.
All right, so here are the guts of the Mac Mini, minus the optical drive, because we're not going to use that. And I'm also not going to use this original hard drive, because there is a Mac OS install on here, and who knows, maybe there is some long lost file on here. You know what we do when we need to find a new drive. That's right, it's the wheel of SSDs. Which one are we going to sacrifice to the great nation of Canada? Dan will have the pleasure of being tormented by our finest inland professional. 120 gigs, nice. So we'll just transfer over all of this gubbins. Just pop this on here. A Little bit of electrical tape for good measure. I'm sure we'll be using a lot more tape today. All right, let's see how we're gonna mount these components inside our wonderful new case here. All right, so the Mac Mini and fan assembly fit very perfectly right here. Look at that. Like a glove, still have access to the rear ports and just enough room up front. And the power supply can fit in right here for us to do our internal timer shenanigans. But first, we're gonna break out the soldering iron because I wanna hook up a much more hilarious power button to this thing. And the power button is right here and that has two wires that go along the board here to this connector. And on the opposite side of this connector, two pads. So we will solder wires to those two pads. Definitely need the goof goggles for this one. All right, and now let's expertly repair this RAM socket. All right, I've got the internals haphazardly shoved into the case. Now, if my evil calculations are correct, when I touch these two wires together, it should chime. Ah, it lives! <laughs> oh, it's so stupid. Okay, so I'm gonna wire up this nice mechanical key switch as the power button and we will mount it on the front of the case. It will be kind of like so. And I've just wired the reset button to the power button because the Mac Mini doesn't have a reset button. Ooh, clicky. All right, let's see if our goofy power button works. It does! All right, let's install our brand new SSD. And this is metal, so in order to shield the components underneath, we'll use the time-honored trick of a bit of cardboard. Beautiful. All right, I've got this nice little USB hub into which I'm going to plug our goat screamer and our mouse and keyboard mover. Oh, it's like a work of art. All right, I've got the Nightmare Machine partially together. Let's apply power. And I guess we should try to install an operating system on this thing. We're gonna be installing Pear OS, a Linux distro designed to more or less replicate Mac OS Monterey's user interface. Oh my God, look at this. Oh, it's ridiculously good. It looks like Mac OS, but slightly off. And of course, a pear logo in the corner. Oh, look, it's got wobbly windows turned on. Wobbly windows. So Dan is in Canada, so we will choose British English. Region Antarctica. Yeah, that sounds right to me. Erase the disk. Strong, secure password. That's definitely not just the word action, but we'll let him log in automatically. Well, there it goes. Hopefully jump cut to ParaOS is installed. And here we are booting into our fresh install of the cursed Linux Mac OS. <laughs> About this Parintosh. Oh yeah, look at that, ParaOS Monterey. <laughs> yeah, I dare say we have a functional machine. Uh, I love that they have wobbly windows turned on. Oh my God, the mouse cursor is moving by itself. <laughs> yeah, this thing will hit all sorts of buttons randomly because of that weird little device we put in there. It'll 
move the mouse, so it'll do page up and page down. I think it'll do keystrokes, but it should be subtle enough that you don't really notice it all the time. Just every now and then something moves on its own. Oh yeah, it just did it. <laughs> uh, it does it quite a lot, actually. <laughs> oh no, it's like hitting all sorts of buttons. Okay, now check this out. This is my favorite part. This is a standard wall mounted timer that I have spliced a power cable through. So now it will only provide power if you turn it past this point. If you forget to wind this thing back up every 15 minutes, the computer will just shut off. So we plug the power supply into the timer. Now if we press the power button, nothing happens. But if we turn the timer on, now it starts up. But if the timer gets too low, the whole thing just shuts off. <laughs> and of course, I'm going to mount this on the back of the case for maximum inconvenience. And so here it is, the most cursed computer that I've ever built. These USB ports not connected, couldn't be bothered. Around the back here, we have a power cord, the timer, of course. The computer is mounted securely with uh, zip ties and double-sided tape. If Dan happens to look underneath, I've put a quick warning here to, you know, not look inside here. That's totally fine. But it works, it lives, and it screams like a goat at random intervals. So I think it's time to pack this thing up and send it out to the great American North, Kanata. Blah, 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 blah. Well, I've dropped our monstrosity off in the mail and it's on its way up to the great white North. And you'll have to subscribe to Dan's channel if you want to see him suffer through using it. And once again, thank you Bamboo for sponsoring today's video and sending me that P2S printer, which delivers pro level prints from the very first print. So check out the links I've put down in the description below. And thank you very much for watching. And I just want to give a very special thank you to all of my Patreon supporters and channel members. Thank you so much, each and every one of you for supporting me and supporting this channel and all the weird stuff I do. I am so very grateful and I just could not do this without you.